Good morning, friends. I greet you in the name of our risen Savior. Uh, today is Monday of Holy Week, and so uh, the videos, <clears throat> I hope to get more than one video out per day, uh, one video dealing completely with Holy Week, uh, and the other one dealing with just the, the Brad's beams that I've been sending out. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today and all the blessings you've given us. God, please continue to hold us together and help us as we celebrate this week, but we're almost certain that you mourn the way this week ended. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our text for today is John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there, and Martha was serving, but Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Mary then took a pound of very costly perfume of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, who was intending to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Now he said this not because he was concerned about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to pilfer what was put into it. Therefore, Jesus said to him, Let her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The large crowd of Jews then learned that he was there, and they came, not for Jesus' sake, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. But the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away, and they were believing in Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, we have some very hard statements here. Um, the, the first and foremost is, Mary, in the world's eyes, Mary used three years worth of salary to buy this nard that she anointed Jesus' feet with, and she used it to anoint his feet. Nobody would have done that. Nobody in their right mind would have done that. But the beautiful thing about Mary was she wasn't looking at the time. She was looking at the future. I wonder if in a moment of inspiration, Mary knew exactly what she was doing. Jesus' words are very beautiful right here. Leave her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. Now, all the apostles sitting around, they would have looked at Jesus' burial as years down the road. Jesus was only in his early 30s. They couldn't have known that the end of this week would have been his burial. So, Jesus gives her some beautiful words of comfort. Now, let's look at Judas for just a minute. Um, Single-minded, seemingly only focusing on the money. All of the Gospels, we believe, were written after, long after all the events happened. And pretty much every time you read Judas Iscariot's name, you see that he's the one that was going to betray Jesus or the one that did betray Jesus. You go from a future tense to a past tense, looking back at the events, and everybody is told, hey, this is how it happened. <clears throat> now, one more thing I want to discuss about what Jesus said <clears throat> you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. For a long time, this was a curse 
uh, this was a perceived curse that wealthy church people would say, well, Jesus said the church would always have poor people or the world would always have poor people. Finally, the founder of the United Methodist Church, John Wesley, came around and he said, wait a minute, that's not a curse on poor people. That's a blessing to you, the church. My sacramental theology professor named Bob Stamps used to tell us, and you can find this on YouTube if you look for it, faith always needs two things, something to touch and something to do. We are blessed. We, the church, we have been blessed in Jesus' words right here. We always have someone to touch, and we always have something to do by working for the poor people. This is not a curse, as was supposed back then, but this is a blessing to us as the church because all you have to do is look outside and you can find someone that needs something. And to that person, you can reach out to and you can touch them and you can do something for them. So as we live into Jesus's words, let's not forget what Dr. Bob Stamp said Faith always needs something to do and something to touch. And, and the poor here from this is a wonderful, wonderful idea that Jesus gave us. Now, I want to look at John's words in, in closing here. And we need to look at the extent that the Pharisees and the religious upper class people were going to go through to make sure that Jesus's movement within Judaism was going to die when he did, the chief priests, verse 10, the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death also. So you see, they don't only want to get the miracle worker, they want to get the evidence of the miracle also. So as we work our way through this week, it was dangerous to be Jesus. It was dangerous to be Jesus' disciple or apostle. And it was also dangerous to receive a blessing from Jesus or a miracle. However you want to term that terminology, uh, blessing, miracle. John tends to use the word sign, uh, which is very interesting because a sign always points beyond itself to something bigger. Uh, if you look at a stop sign, it's just a flat piece of aluminum with some paint and some letters on it. But try running through one when there's heavy traffic. Something much heavier than that is gonna hit you or you're gonna hit something much heavier than that stop sign. And and that's, that's sort of the, a quick and dirty definition of sign. So, Everything Jesus did pointed, according to John, everything Jesus did pointed to God as a sign. And that is terrific, according to John. So, my friends, I apologize that we cannot be together during this week of Holy Week. Uh, there were some lunches planned here up, up in Union City. Uh, we were going to hear some really good preaching. Our district superintendent, Cynthia Davis, uh, Mary Beth Bernhausel was going to preach. Dr. Mary Beth Bernhausel was going to preach. I, and there, there were three others. I, oh, I was going to preach. I was supposed to preach today. I, and I'm, I'm sorry that we missed that. We're going to miss our time of fellowship and our chance to share God's word. But we, we friends, we can join together and we can share God's word. Uh, I bid you good day and blessing. And hopefully I'll be able to get a second video out this morning. Blessings, my friends. Bye-bye.